your plates, grab your food, and come sit down and eat with me. And while you're at it, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that bell button so you can get future notifications every time the roommates drop a new video. Enjoy watching, y'all. Now let's eat. Hey, roomies. How y'all doing? If you're new, welcome. And if you've been here a while, you know it's time for the countdown. Three, two, one, go. So roomies, let me introduce you guys what I'm having. I got boneless ribs smothered in barbecue sauce. And then I got refried beans, the sweet heat flavor, coleslaw, and we can't forget the, the pasta salad. I had a brain fart for a moment, guys. Sorry about that. I'm having a late night dinner. So tonight, you are late night mukbanging with Amber. So the topic for tonight is when was your first time? And by first time I mean your first time when you lost your V card. I got talking code because as family friendly. And I never know what age group is watching. So Ruby's tell me when was your first time? Whether it was with a guy or a girl. And how old were you? Go ahead and tell me all about it in the comments. Because I'm really dying to know about everyone's opinion about this topic. Let me tell you mine. My first time I was about 18. And it was with this one guy. I was 18, he was about 19. And uh, it happened. It happened a few months after my mom passed away. Cause my mom, she passed away when I was about 17, when um, it was like the 6th the six of July, 2008. Like when I, like during my teen years, a lot of the girls, a lot of the girls, they all had like boyfriends and stuff. 
I was probably the only girl. I was the only girl in my entire school. That didn't have a boyfriend. And was not like intimately active. Like all the girls used to make fun of me like I was an oddball. They would say to me like, what are you waiting for? And I'm like, I told them like, I'm not waiting for anything. I'm like, the right, main reason I wasn't doing what all the other girls were doing is because I knew if I acted anything like the other girls were acting, like having a boyfriend, sneaking around, doing stuff I had no business doing, some way, somehow, My mom would have found out at the time. But I remember my first time it was, um, it felt like it was magical because Because the guy that I was active with at the time, he was very, I thought he was very attractive. So number one, that was a plus. Um, because all through my teen years, because I respected my mom so much, her base, her basically, her rules were that I couldn't do nothing like that. Like I couldn't have a boyfriend. I couldn't be like active with a guy. while living under her roof. Because when I was young, my mom used to, uh, she used to have me tested. Like she would lie and say to me like, it's time for your yearly checkup or whatever. That that checkup that girl that women get every year. But I kind of thought it was weird. It wasn't a yearly checkup. It was more like a like every three to four month checkup. And I'm thinking like I'm thinking like why does she have me getting checkups? Is there something wrong with me? I was saying to myself, do I have cancer too? And she's just not telling me. Because at the time, me and my mom, we really didn't have the talk. Like, she, there was a lot of things she did not educate me on. Because she figured if we didn't have the talk, then I wouldn't be thinking about it. And then she wouldn't have to worry about me getting pregnant like a lot of the girls I went to school with. There was one girl in my school and when I was a sophomore she got she was pregnant 
when she was a freshman. And she was about 14 years old pregnant. And I was thinking to myself like, like, dang, I feel sorry for her. Imagine having to tell your mom that kind of news at that age. That's, that's not anything I will wish on anybody. That's like the worst news you could tell your parents. Cause I knew if it was my parents that I had to go through that. They would have kicked me out of the house. My mom was the type she would say that if you lose your V-card or you smoke weed under my roof or well you're under my roof she would say like I'm kicking you out. So that's why whatever stuff went on in high school I was not a part of it. The only thing I did the only thing I did that she didn't know about was uh I was drinking, that's about it. Cause with drinking you can hide that. Cause with alcohol, the smell is not going to stay on your clothes or your hair. With alcohol it'll be on your breath up until you brush your teeth. And then then And your parents never find out. Yeah, with me, I was the type of girl where I was the type of girl I was sneaking out of the house. I would go in the house parties. Because I knew my mom was in bed by like 11 o'clock. So by the time it was like 11.30 to midnight, I was, I was creeping out the back door. Creeping out the back door, cutting through my neighbor's yard, and then jumping in my, my friend's cars. time I sneaked out the house at like 1130 and I did not get home I didn't get home until like what was it like four or five in the morning it was like four or five in the morning I got home and I was surprised that my dad or my brother was not up at that time Cause that was around the time like that was around the time my dad probably would have been up, but he would have been like hanging out in the basement because he wouldn't want to wake up my mom. Shoot, my, <clears throat> my first time, I had to wait until I was 18 because, I mean, like I said, like I said, if I would have did that when I was like a teenager, like everybody else was doing, I would have been kicked out of the house. Because after... After my mom passed away, my dad pretty much looked at me like I was an adult because I was 18. And my brother, he was a cyborg. 
I could pretty much get away with lying to him and he would totally believe it. Because he had thought because... He thought because I'm, like, bisexual. He thought if I was hanging out with the girls, he wouldn't have to worry about me. He wouldn't have to worry about me having no intimacy with no guys. Or that he wouldn't have to worry about me getting pregnant. So the only time I want to hang out with a guy, I'll just tell him, I'll be like, yeah, I'm hanging out with so-and-so tonight. I'll be home at this hour. And I'll be like, oh, okay, have fun. I will, not, I will never tell him, him the truth because, like, after my mom died, it's like my brother, he wanted to take over the role of my mother. It's like he wanted to be my mom. So like my first time was how it went. My friend from uh, from Jewel that I was working with at the time, me and her, we both like the same guy. And so, he wasn't like going out with her, but he was just like messing around with her. And so this one day I asked him, I was like, I asked him if he had her number because I lost it. And I was like, do you have a so-and-so's number? I had lost it. I accidentally deleted it out of my phone. And then he says to me, he's like, uh, yeah, I have it. And uh, also here's my number. So as soon as he said that, I think by like the next day, I said to him like, oh, okay, I'm interested. And so the next day, we go to the lip, he picks me up for work. We go to the liquor store. And he went and bought sour white grape. It was white grape flavored uh, Smirnoff. And that was a, that was honestly the best tasting vodka that I ever had. Cause I told him that was my first time. And I told him I wanted it to be pain free. Because your first time, it's not really going to be enjoyable. I mean, not at first. So the funny thing he says to me, he says to me, he's like, Amber, alcohol is not going to, is not going to numb you. Alcohol, you're still going to feel all of the pain going on. He's like, you can be, he's like, you could be, uh, you could be extremely high and still feel what's going on. And I looked at him like he was crazy and out of his mind because I'm thinking like, now that is a freaking lie. Because I had drank, I had drank before when I was a teenager. And when I had drank, I couldn't feel like, I could literally, like, 
I get so drunk that I would slap myself in the face and I couldn't even feel it. Because if you drink enough, your whole body will feel like it's numb. So at first it was like, it was painful for the first like 30 minutes. And then by the time that 30th minute came, when the alcohol kicked in, I, did, I couldn't really feel anything. It felt like, it felt like I had like, like a, like a tingly feeling. Like a tingly feeling in my brain. Like I was just on cloud nine. And like the, like the heavens had opened up. Like that. That is the first time with a guy that I will always remember. And the thing that was romantic about it was he had scented, he had scented candles in his room. Like I just thought, I just thought that was so romantic and he had music on. And the lights were dimmed. So it was like, it was like the movies, like a fantasy, like how you would fantasize, how people would do that in the movies. It was kind of like that. My first time with a girl. It was kind of a weird situation. Like, my ex-girlfriend, the one that, um, the abusive ex-girlfriend that I went with for about two years. It, we had like a romantic, it was like a romantic dinner. Well, it was actually a lot of fun, our first date. First, what we did is, um, I picked her up at the, I picked her up at the train station. Then, uh, we went to the carnival by my house, uh, by my parents' house. At the time, this was year, years later, I was about, uh, I was 21. So after, so we we got on the Ferris wheel together, and then that I was so scared of heights. That was like holding onto her arm because I was worried from the way that the Ferris wheel was rocking, like the seats that we were sitting in, it was kind of like rocking back and forth when it would stop. I was so scared that I like grabbed onto her and I was I was holding her like I did not want to let her go. And she says to me, she's like, she's like, don't worry, everything's gonna be okay. She said, I'm not gonna let you fall. So then after that we get off the Ferris wheel 
And so going on rides, we were just playing the games that was at the uh, at the carnival. And she won me. We both won each other teddy bears. I won her like a. She won me a teddy bear. It was like a like a red. How do I say? She was. It was like probably like this big. Yeah, it was about this big. It was a red teddy bear, and I won her like a a teal blue teddy bear. And it was like me, her, and my friend Sarah came along with us because we let um we let Sarah hang out with us because um she had just went through a breakup and she didn't want to be home alone. So I'm like, why don't you, why don't you come along and hang out with, with me and my date? Like, me and the girl that I was dating at the time. And she was cool with it because like she knew my, she knew my best friend was, uh, she knew she was straight, so she didn't have nothing to worry about. So then after we left, after we left the carnival, we walked over to the park and the park was like a block away. So Sarah, she ended up leaving. And then it was just me and um, me and my ex at the time. We go to the park. And we're taking a walk, like holding hands and stuff. And we're sitting on the park bench kissing. And we see this other couple across from us and they were kissing. So then we start kissing. I'm getting all romantic. And she says to me, she's like, Amber, sweetie, I'm sorry to tell you, but you cannot kiss. And then she tries showing me how to kiss at the time. It was funny. She told me, she was like, you kiss like as if you're eating a cheeseburger. That's not how you kiss a girl. She's like, you kiss a girl the way you would kiss a guy. She's like, that's the wrong way. You're supposed to use... You're supposed to use lips to kiss up another girl. You're not supposed to be using tongue. So then me and her, we start making out. And then... And then after like a few minutes of like sitting in the park talking and kissing, then finally she asked me, she's like, do you want to go out to dinner? So we get in the taxi, we go to one of the restaurants downtown. I was like one of the... It was like one of the restaurants in like Boys Town we went to. It wasn't. It was a lot of fun. Me and her, we were like, we had dinner, we had drinks. And then we went back to her house. And then that night, <clears throat> me and her, we had our, our one night stands in the room. It was our first time. And I like, I really enjoyed it with her. Cause at the time she wasn't, she was actually a pretty nice person. But usually, 
a person trying to like impress you on the first date. They're most likely going to be nice to you at that moment. And you normally are not going to see the true colors until like two weeks to a month later. Until you two are actually in a relationship. So that after we did it, We both end up cuddling and then went to sleep. And then I slept over. And the next day, she, uh, we went to the mall. So in a way, it was, was kind of like two dates. Next day, me and her, we go to the mall together. We're holding hands through the, throughout the mall. And so she bought me... We both bought each other stuff at the mall. She bought me a t-shirt. I think it was a t-shirt, the hat from uh, from Hot Topic. And then she bought herself. Yeah, she bought herself a hat and some stuff from Hot Topic. And the, at the time, I thought it was just the most romantic thing because that was like that was like my first real date, and to me, it felt like it was like my first romantic date. And then the next day, I'm gonna say it was her birthday, and I made the mistake. Well, that same day when I went to work that night, I was working at Jewel, and so I'm working the second shift. So she went home, and then I went to work, and so she texts me on my phone, and then she says to me, she's like, I really like you. Would you be my girlfriend? And I'm looking at my friend Sarah, I mean, sorry. I'm looking at my friend, that uh, my best friend that hung out with us the day before. She was working with me that shift. And we're both bagging groceries. And it's like late night, like two hours before the store was gonna close. I look over to her and I said to her, I'm like, you're never gonna guess what this girl sent me. I'm like, she used to ask me, do you want me, do you want to be my girlfriend? What should I say? He's like, well, how do you feel? Do you want to be? And I'm like, that's not the point. It's her birthday. I don't know if I could reject someone on their birthday. And then she's like, why don't you say yes and give it a try? If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. At least, at least you took a little, you, at least you took a risk. So, now me, I'm romantic. I'm not the type to want to... <laughs> I'm not the type to want to reject a person on their birthday, on Christmas, or even on Valentine's Day. So I said yes, sure. I mean, she was so happy. And the thing I regret about saying yes to that. was that week within that week that we were dating she ends up convincing me to move in with her and then I did and then my ex-girlfriend before her ends up calling me well texting me and so my current girlfriend at the time she sees here's like a text message on my phone and she looks at my phone and she's like she says to me she's like why is your ex asking you to hang out she said to me that she wants nothing to do with you and that she doesn't even think you're fun to hang out with 
And I'm like, well, she's not going to want to hang out with you because she just broke up with you. And me and her have known each other about a year before she met you. So that's why, probably why she's more comfortable to hang out with me. Because the ex that, um, the ex that she was talking about was her ex. But, um, I had met this girl through my ex-girlfriend. And she broke up when they broke up. And then she decided to ask me out after going with my ex. And I felt really bad because all the stories that she told me about, like, all the stuff, all the bad stuff that happened to her growing up, and I just, it was hard for me to say no. And she said a lot of people that she loved or went out with, that they abandoned her or whatever. And I'm just thinking to myself, how could they do that to someone so nice? But I look back and think about that. That is one mistake I do regret. Because if I could go back in time, if I could go back in time, I would I would have said no. I wouldn't care that it was that it was her birthday. I would have said no. Like I know a lot of people say this, but I wish that I knew now what I. That I wish I knew back then what I know now. I wouldn't have made none of the mistakes I made in my early 20s. So, Roomies, I had so much fun eating and talking with you, but I'm done eating. So don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that bell button so you can get future notifications every time the roommates drop a new video. Thank you all for watching. Peace out, y'all. We love you. Remember to live, love, and laugh. Bye, y'all.